Welcome to the next episode of Myeloma Made Simple. Today we will discuss monoclonal antibodies made simple. One of the most important advances we have seen in multiple myeloma has been the introduction of immunotherapy. This is a word we use when we employ a patient's own immune system to attack their multiple myeloma. Although we could argue that all forms of myeloma therapy are a component of immunotherapy because myeloma is a disease of the immune system, this is most clearly seen with monoclonal antibody therapy. Monoclonal antibodies are given that name because they have a monoclonal or single target. They are called antibodies because they function like our own body's antibodies, which help fight off infections. So for example, when we give a vaccination, we create antibodies to whatever we've been vaccinated for. And when we get exposed to that uh, infection, our bodies then send those antibodies to destroy that infection. We have replicated that same process in the lab by creating antibodies that now target something on the surface of the myeloma cell instead of the infection or uh, the other thing for which we've been vaccinated. And so now these antibodies can very specifically target the myeloma cell to destroy it. We typically divide monoclonal antibodies into categories based on that target or what we call antigen that they attach to. We can think of a monoclonal antibody as a Y-shaped molecule, where the open part of the Y attaches to the antigen and the bottom part of the Y triggers the immune system to destroy it. We have several antibodies that have been approved in multiple myeloma. The first two monoclonal antibodies that we'll discuss target the CD38 antigen on the surface of the myeloma cell. We have daratumumab, also known as Darzalex, and isatuximab, also known as Sarclisa. We started using daratumumab back in 2015, where it was used by itself, but now is used typically in combination with multiple other agents, and indeed even used in not only relapsed myeloma, but in frontline myeloma. It was historically given intravenously, but now we can give it subcutaneously or in the skin. Common side effects include infusion reactions when given intravenously or administration reactions when we give it subcutaneously. This is when a patient's immune system overreacts to the presence of the antibody, and the patient can experience fever, chills, or even difficulty breathing. We normally give patients pre-medications before the drug is given, especially in the first cycle to reduce the risk of these reactions. Other side effects can include reducing blood counts, infections, and interference with the measuring of serum protein electrophoresis. The other CD38 antibody is isatuximab, which is very similar to daratumab, but does attach to a slightly different area on the CD38 molecule. It is approved in combination with pomalidomide and carfilzomib in relapsed myeloma. It is currently still given intravenously and can cause infusion reactions. Its side effect profile is similar to that of daratumumab. The final monoclonal antibody approved in multiple myeloma is elotuzumab, also known as implicity. It has a slightly different target in that it targets SLAMF7, which used to be known as CS1. This drug is given in combination with lenalidomide or pomalidomide in relapsed myeloma. We tend to see a lower risk of infusion reactions with this drug, and otherwise it is very well tolerated. All monoclonal antibodies do increase the risk of shingles, and so antiviral prophylaxis or prevention is warranted for each of them. In summary, we see that this class of drug is really a critical part of immunotherapy and therapy in general for multiple myeloma. One of their greatest benefits is that their side effect profile tends to be different than other classes of drugs, which allows them to be uh, combined conveniently with alkylators, proteasome inhibitors, immunomodulatory drugs, XPO1 inhibitors, and others. <music>